Hey, brothers and sisters, this is Brother Patrick, your absolute, extremely most favorite brother from another mother. Hope you guys are doing all right. Been having lots of power outages, so I'm late getting this video out today. I usually try to get it up and post it uh, by 9 or 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. So as you guys continue to pray that our electrical situation would improve in this Mindanao Island. It has been getting some better. There's plans to improve it, but... Sometimes it's politics too, brothers and sisters. <laughs> it's not based in reality, but based in the work of the the Wizard of Oz behind the curtain, right? Pulling the strings, just like in uh, All in the World. Uh, it's always about pulling the strings and manipulating people. Uh, that's what goes on in this world, brothers and sisters, until our Lord returns and puts an end to all these things. Hallelujah. Praise God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You know, in heaven it says, you know, that there's no... Uh, you know, I love the way, especially, you know, the King James, the way it says it uh, in English is awesome. It says, you know, in God, there's not even a shadow of turning, you know. So, uh, you know, like when you turn something around, sometimes there's some kind of a shadow. But in God, there is no shadow of turning. You know, it's light. And it says in, in the Bible, in Revelation, there in, the, in heaven, in the New Jerusalem, there, you know, there is no... A need for any sun there because God is the light the glory of God what they call the Shekinah glory of God so there is no darkness there's no there's no brownouts in heaven there's no blackouts in heaven there's no power shortage in heaven praise God brothers and sisters hallelujah what a day that will be oh what a day that will be Lord they tell me of a home far away you know that song they tell me of an uncloudy day I don't know the whole words let's say Oh, the land of cloudless skies. Oh, the land of an uncloudy day. Oh, I, I don't know what they tell me of a home that is far away. Oh, Lord, they, oh, they tell me of an uncloudy day. I don't know this. I haven't heard it but a few times when I was a kid, so I can't remember the words. But, you know, up there in Beulah land, in Beulah land, the Bible calls it, um, married the married land Beulah means married the married land hallelujah be married unto the Lord hallelujah praise God brothers and sisters praise God Almighty you know those days are so soon at hand brothers and sisters you know lots of times we focus on the like the tribulation tribulation or life and tribulation to come and the tribulation is gonna be on mankind etc 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 but Paul said you know whatever things are good whatever things are lovely whatever things are wonderful you know, think on these things. Hallelujah. So we should build ourselves up, as Paul also says in uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, after he gets to talking about the rapture in chapter 4. He said, you know, therefore, uh, you know, uh, comfort yourselves and one another with, uh, you know, songs and hymns in your heart. So, brothers and sisters, this is our uh, resurrection day, first day of the week, a.k.a. an English Sunday service for the Church of the Firstborn. We need to uh, sing a hymn, sing a song. And, uh, you know, I'm open to all kinds of songs. I listen to all, any kind of, any music that's anointed, I love to hear it, whether it be an old hymnal, new song, etc. So, you know, a lot of times I'll play, I play these anointed hymnal songs, and sometimes people say, oh, you know, that you don't like modern songs, or they may think that. No, I like any song that's just anointed. Now, this is all a cappella, so it's much better. Something about that a cappella music, too, where you can really hear the words and, uh, you know, you can hear from the Lord better. Sometimes uh, music, they play the instruments too loud, you know, and then, you know, it's hard to hear. You know, sometimes it can create a little hard of hearing from God uh, when you're overridden in like a rock concert. Even though God operates through all kinds of music, you know, in all kinds of situations, there's uh, music for worship, music for praise, jumping for joy and shouting for joy, like a youth crusade and all that. Yeah, but there's times to be, you know, be still and be quiet and, you know, the different moves of the Spirit of God. I just wanted to say this, before I forget, it's in the back of my mind about Sunday. You know, I always see those old, you know, the Lord keeps giving me to talk about those old Judaizers. Judaizers are trying to put Christians under the law. They always say something wacky like, uh, well, you know, Sunday is worshiping the sun. Well, Saturday is about Saturn, the planet Saturn, you know, which is much more actually correlated with Satan than the sun. Saturn is a planet, you know, in the symbol. Well, I cut off my video instead of starting the song. <laughs> I'm really having a day. Let's worship the Lord, brothers and sisters. Victory in Jesus.
leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. Grows from day to day, leaning on the everlasting heart, leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms, leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting. Everlasting arms, I have blessed peace with my Lord so near, leaning on the everlasting arms, leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms, leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting to walk in this pilgrim way, leaning on the everlasting arm. Oh, how bright the path grows from day to day, leaning on the everlasting arms. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Brothers and sisters, let's do one more. Let's do one more. The Rochester children. I have been blessed. If this doesn't, if this doesn't crack that old heart heart of yours, I don't know what to tell you. Thank the Lord. Tell him. Thank you. 
you, Lord Jesus. Brought your blessings. Bless you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. She stands in the harbor, Miss Liberty called. All have gave some, but some gave it all for me to be blessed. He's my shoulder to lean on when I am down. The rock where he leads me when I'm overwhelmed. The place where he hugs me under his blessed brothers and sisters have you been blessed hallelujah of course you've had if you've got a computer hallelujah bless his name hallelujah Thank you, Lord. You ask how I make it day after day. There's only one thing I can say. It's been a long journey, but I have been blessed. Walking with Jesus, I have no regret. He is so good to me, I must confess. The way has been long, but I'm blessed. All that I need, I find at His feet. When I'm hungry, he feeds me with manna so sweet. When my soul is weary, he gives peace and rest. All I can say is I'm blessed. It's been a long journey, but I have been blessed. Walking with Jesus, I have no regret. He is so good to me, I must confess. The way has been long, but I'm blessed. Amen. Now I've had my share of Amen. sunshine and rain. My days filled with laughter, my eyes filled with pain. But every now as I travel this way, the journey is sweeter each day. It's been a long journey, but I have been blessed. Amen. Walking with Jesus, I have no regret. Thank you, Lord. He is so good to me, I must confess. The way is Brothers and sisters, what can you do but praise the Lord to hear the little children, you know, the little children out of the mouth of babes and sucklings. The Spirit of the Lord speaks, hallelujah, even as on the day of Palm Sunday, brothers and sisters, when the Lord rode in on that colt, 
the fold of a donkey. He rode in, he rode into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, and the children, you know, cried out, Hosanna to the son of David. And the people laid the palm branches branches in their coats, their cloaks on the ground, and Jesus rode in, and then the uh uh, the Pharisees said, Don't you hear what these little children are saying? And Jesus said, Have you not read in the scripture where it says, Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, I will give you praise. Hallelujah! Long live the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You know, they say that in countries like in England. Long live the Queen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But our King is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Far above all powers and principalities, even earthly principalities, and kingdoms. He is the King of kings. Hallelujah. And Lord of lords. Hallelujah. So all those royalty people who call themselves kings and lords and the Pope calling himself, you know, the vicar of Christ, all these things. Jesus is the king above all of those things and even above dominions, above, you know, the, uh, the prince of Israel who is in the spirit world Michael, the Bible says in the book of Daniel, chapter 12. Even above Gabriel, even above Michael, the archangel, all of these angels and even the fallen angels. Our Lord is far above all powers and principalities and even forces of darkness in high places. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God, almighty brothers and sisters. Praise God. I'm still playing music in the background, you know, because uh, I get fired up, brothers and sisters, and I want to keep worshiping the Lord. You know, I have to stop and give a word and then praise the Lord a little while longer. I don't know if you've ever, if you haven't, you need to read your Bible. Back there in the Old Testament when you see the story of Elisha, later on in uh, uh, end of 1 Kings, 2 Kings, along through there, you'll see Elisha, who was the disciple of Elijah, and the king, uh, they were having a battle, and the king of Judah agreed to help out the, the old useless king of Israel, when the kingdom split after the death of King Solomon, there's Jeroboam and Rehoboam, then to these two kingdoms, the northern kingdom never had revival. They never repented. They immediately made two golden calves and tried to draw people away from Jerusalem. They didn't want the people from the northern kingdom of Israel going down to Jerusalem. So they tried to make their own place in Samaria, and they put two golden calves. From the very beginning, and they never had a revival. They never repented, never, never. And Elijah and Elisha were prophets in the northern kingdom in this evil kingdom. But Elijah and Elisha, they respected the king of Judah because Judah had periods of good kings and bad kings. They had wicked king Manasseh, and then he had good kings like Hezekiah, etc. So, anyhow, they were having a war, and the king of Judah agreed to help the king of Israel, and they called for, went to see Elisha because the king of Judah said, hey, isn't there a prophet in the land? Let's go see him. Instead of seeing the devil's uh, witch doctors and stuff and these other religions, let's go see the man of God. So the, Elisha said, you know, I'll honor the king of Judah. You know, if he wasn't here, I wouldn't even talk to you. And I wouldn't even deal with you. But they asked him for a word. And what he said was, he said, uh, you know, uh, bring me a minstrel. Let someone play music and uh, so I can hear from the Lord. And that's so true, brothers and sisters. You want a secret on how to hear from God? I'm giving you those nuggets. You know, most people, they only want to hear, they want, you know, they want like a Moses. They want a Catholic priest. They want someone to intercede for them. Where the Bible says there's one mediator between God and man. That's our Lord Jesus Christ. So you can hear from God too. And that's what people like me, that's my calling. Even though I can hear from the Lord because of my ministry more than lots of people because I'm called in that area. But we can all hear from the Lord. Jesus said, my sheep know my voice and they answer not to another. So how to hear from God? The Bible says the Spirit of the Lord inhabits the praises of His people. So when you worship Him and praise Him, hallelujah, the Spirit of the Lord is there manifested in those songs. Just like if you were to go listen to Marilyn Manson, some uh, gangster rap or, you know, uh, country music that's about cheating and lying and stealing or whatever, and, and rock music that's Satan worship, etc., you're inviting demonic influence in your life. When you listen to Christian music and the more anointed the more spirit-filled music, the more the Spirit of the Lord manifests. But ultimately also you need to raise your own voice. Praise the Lord. Worship the Lord. Thank the Lord. Hallelujah. All those things. I talk about that all the time. You know, the Bible gives us an even uh, you know, a general outline. God can't be put in a box, but He gives us a general outline of worship. I will enter His gates with thanksgiving in my heart, which way I just played that song. 
about that. Thank, thank the Lord and blessing the Lord. Thank you, Lord, and blessing the Lord for what we've got. I've been blessed. That's being thankful. That song, I am blessed, is a song of thanks. Enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. Hallelujah. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah, brothers and sisters. So <laughs> without further ado, I want to get to the text. Uh, you know, the power's been out and all kinds of stuff going on, brothers and sisters. So I'm pressing through by the grace of God uh, and, and, and not let the enemy uh, get me down. That's what you got to do, brothers and sisters. You got to be uh, willing to press through. So in John chapter 12, when the Lord is getting ready for the Last Supper, uh, there's a whole other sermon that, uh, that the Lord gave me. Uh, there's just so many. The Lord's given me a hundred sermons, brothers and sisters. A hundred sermons. But I want to start right here. This is in the, you know what? In this same chapter, it's when they did the palm branches too, but them saying, you know, the mouth of babes, that's from Matthew. I believe it's chapter 19. Uh, when the Palm Sunday and, Ma and Matthew is when the Lord, uh, when it, the children are the ones crying out. But if you also have the Palm Sunday here in John chapter 12, which is not the text that I'm going to read from. <laughs> he, now, the Greeks came to see the Lord Jesus, and Jesus would not receive them because he had to first be rejected by Israel. That touches on the messages that the Lord gave me for Israel. And I talked about it in the last video I posted on my regular channel. I keep forgetting or to, to load these videos onto my regular channel because lots of people more watch my regular channel than the church channel. I need to go back and load my videos on there also so that more people will see them. Because um, the, the ultimate goal, of course, is to get the messages that God gives me out to the church. Okay. So after they told Jesus that some Greeks came to see him, Jesus groaned in his spirit. He said, uh, And Jesus said unto them, The hour has come that the Son of Man must be glorified. 12, John 12, 23. Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except a corn of wheat fall unto the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth fruit. Now, brothers and sisters, that's a whole other sermon. I've talked about this many times. Jesus is talking about himself being crucified. He's talking about us, too. You know, it's not I who lives, but Christ who lives in me. Uh, Galatians 2.20. You know, I'm a dead man walking. It's not I who live, but Christ who lives in me. Hallelujah. So, let's read what the Lord said. Verily, verily, I say to you, except a corn of wheat, fall to the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. So Jesus is talking about himself and all Christians. He had to die to bring forth the fruit. You know, God planted his son in the ground. That cross was planted in the ground. Then Jesus was literally put in the ground. Just like everything God does is seed time and harvest. It's not just, you know, people like uh, you hear the t preachers on TV always connecting it to money. And money is one of those things. But a seed, God sowed his son as a seed in this world to reap the harvest of the church. And we, whenever you give someone the gospel, you're sowing the seed of the gospel into their mind. And then as Jesus tells the parable of the sower, you know, sometimes... It goes on good ground, and then they get saved, and then they bear 30, 60, 100-fold fruit. But most of the time, it falls on rocky ground, or it falls on the wayside, etc. And then the person doesn't get saved, or they walk away from the Lord, or they have no roots, etc. So Jesus was saying, if I don't die on the cross, well, then there won't be, you know, I'm just one, and the King James says, uh, a corn of wheat, but a grain of wheat, in modern English. And if you have one grain of wheat, that's your harvest. Now, do you want the one grain of wheat to be your harvest? No. You take the grain of wheat and plant it in the ground. You know, God, only God, think about it. Evolution is, is crazy and nonsense. Look at what God does. You take one grain of wheat, as an example, plant it in the ground. Then it produces a stalk, you know, with a hundred more seeds. It multiplies. Then you can take those hundred seeds and plant it and then have a hundred times a hundred and then just keep doing that. You know, you could make... Enough wheat to supply the whole world for one grain if you keep re sowing it. But if you go ahead and eat that grain, well, that's, you know, you've already took your capital and consumed your capital. So there's no more fruit. There's no more profit. It's gone. That's it. That's what lots of people do. They eat their seed instead of sowing their seed. And that's a whole other sermon, too. Look at me. I'm hitting a different, 100 different sermons at one time. Sorry about that. <laughs> He that, uh, verse 25, now see, Jesus is talking about us too. He that loveth his life shall lose it. He that hateth his life in this world 
shall keep it unto eternal life. So if you love the world and you don't die to the world, there's many other Bible verses. Like I quoted from Galatians 2.20, it's not I who live, but Christ who lives in me. You know, we have to be dead to sin, dead to this world. When we're baptized, we're buried with Christ and resurrected with Him symbolically in water baptism, to be submerged, then come up out of the water, representing that resurrection. Spiritually, we're resurrected. That's symbolic of that, brothers and sisters. An outward demonstration of our faith and obedience to Christ is water baptism. Let's see. If any man serve him, uh, listen to this. He that loveth his life shall lose it. He that hateth his life in this world shall keep it into eternal life. I could preach all day just on that. And I want to go into what that means. You know, we talk about it all the time. People ask me, you know, how do I know I'm going to be raptured, etc. I made videos, and this is a new message that the Lord gave me on this. How to know your rapture. You can rapture ready. Listen to this. Listen to this. The Lord gave me another bright neon light here of how to know that you're rapture ready, that you're going to be raptured. Verse 26, if any man serve me, let him follow me. To be a Christian means a follower of Christ. Christian means follower of Jesus, a disciple, a follower, a student. When Jesus walked along the Sea of Galilee, he said to the disciples, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. And he said to them later on, don't, and John too, you, and on John he also said, you didn't, you didn't choose me, I chose you. Hallelujah. Let's see what it says. If any man serve me, let him follow me. Those who are led by the Spirit, these are the sons of God. The Spirit of God is the same as Jesus is the Father. God is God. Jesus went so that another comforter just like him would come. I can send another comforter. He was with us, Emmanuel, when he walked the earth, and now he is in us by the indwelling of his Holy Spirit, the mystery of the Trinity. And I don't and, and the people keep debating that and saying people that say this and say that are heretics, no. Jesus is equal with the Father and the Holy Spirit is equal with the Father. They're all co-equal, all in one. And people that, that, that call each other heretics because they say uh, they think that they're, that they're manifested in three different forms and all this other stuff, who cares? I mean, God is a mystery. By definition, God is beyond understanding. The only thing that makes you a heretic or makes you a cult is when you say Jesus is a lesser God, like the Jehovah Witnesses and the Mormons and all that cult groups that say Jesus is a lesser God, then that is not Christianity. But you can't overexalt Jesus. People that believe that Jesus and the Father are literally one, and people that say, you know, somehow they're one but yet separate, who cares? This is uh, the carnal-minded uh, religious people debating, and, it, and it's, you can't overexalt Jesus. Jesus is God. He is our Savior. The Father is God, and the Holy Spirit is God. And how all that works well, it's God. It's bigger and beyond our mental capacity to understand. You know, it's like trying to explain to a chicken how to do nuclear fusion. Chickens fighting about how to make a nuclear bomb. I mean, it's beyond their capacity. And wisdom is to know. Wisdom is to know that you don't know. You know that? Have you ever heard that expression? You know, the more I learn, the more I realize I don't know. Wisdom is knowing you don't know everything. That there's things you cannot know. That's wisdom. In this life, we can't know. Now in heaven, we have a whole different, you know, the, we're released from the, the limitations of the fall and all that. Well, that's a whole different story. I don't even know. Even then, if we'll understand. But we're definitely not understanding this side of heaven, brothers and sisters. So I want to caution those who major in the minors. Stop majoring in the minors. They're all three God. Co-equal. Hallelujah. Let's see. Listen, let me read the verse. It, verse 26, John 12, 26. If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. Now this is the part that the Lord quickened to me. Of course, we're supposed to follow Jesus. Those who are led by the Spirit, these are the sons of God. Romans 8, 14. And many other verses. And listen to this. Where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. Now here's two ways, two things about that. Number one, Jesus said, John chapter 14. Now I can, you know what? I've got the text here. Let me skip ahead to John chapter 14. If I can get it to work. Okay. <laughs> uh, let's see. Let not uh, John 14, 1. Here's one side, the spiritual side of looking at this for heaven. 
And about the rapture. This is about the rapture. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. See, so Jesus, I just, the text he said, he says, well, if any man who follows me wherever I'm at, you're going to be there too. So the, that's one part of it. that He's going to be in heaven, so we're going to be in heaven. And for those who don't believe in the pre-tribulation rapture, this text is talking about the rapture. The se you know, and I can do video all day long about this. The second coming, the Lord returns to earth, and he judges the sheep and the goats out of the tribulation saints and the people left alive on earth at the, who did not take the mark at the end of the tribulation. He'll be on earth. But the rapture, he meets us in the air. The Lord doesn't come back to earth. People say, oh, the Lord, you know, the... The Lord returns three times. There's a third coming. No. The second coming is at the end of the tribulation. After the seven years, the Lord, the Lord returns and rules and reigns on earth. Returns with ten thousands of his saints. Like it says in Jude, quoted straight from Enoch chapter 1. Straight out of the, the book of Enoch chapter 1 is quoted in, in Jude. As Jude says, you know, Enoch seventh from Adam. The Enoch. Not another Enoch. Some people say, oh, it's another Enoch. No. The Enoch. Seventh from Adam, Jude tells us. And... That's the second coming. The rapture is this text. We'll be in heaven with the Lord. In my Father's house are many mansions. I'll come and receive you unto myself. The second coming, he doesn't receive anybody to himself in heaven and take you to his Father's house. He returns to earth for a thousand year reign on earth and we rule and reign with him. We return with him to rule and reign on earth. That's the second coming. So those people that, uh, you know, they, they don't know the Bible. They, it's just so simple and basic and a and an elementary school child. Because when I was an elementary school child and I went to vacation Bible school and we had a, a preacher who came in and taught about the rapture and the end times and all that with charts and the whole nine yards, I understood it as a 10-year-old boy. I understood the difference between the rapture and the second coming. Very simple, very clearly stated, and they used the King James. And people say they can't understand the King James. It was a, I understood it. As a 10-year-old child, as, an, as a native English speaker, of course. If you're not a Eng native English speaker, of course, that's a, you know, that's a different story. Maybe, you know, of course. Anyway, brothers and sisters, the second part of that, which is what I want to talk about, and that one, of course, is an awesome point. Uh, I'm going to go back to the text again real quick. Let's see. Where was I at? Is it verse 22? Verse 23? Uh, okay. Verse 26, John 12, 26. If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there he shall, shall also my servant be. If any man serves me, him my father will honor. So the, the Lord, the Father will honor you with what? With long life. And I will show him my salvation, Psalm 91, because he has set his love upon me. I will give him long life and show him my salvation, Psalm 91. Again, I'll say it again. But... The Father will honor you with going to heaven and all those things and honor you in this life too. God will honor you in this life and the life to come, Jesus told his disciples. When Peter said, you know, uh, Jesus, we've given up everything for you. What about us? And Jesus said, you know, God will give you, you know, you will receive houses and, and things in, in, in eternity, houses and lands and all that in eternity and in this life and in the life, in this life and in the life to come with tribulation. Of course, we have the tribulation of persecution, etc., not every person, in, Peter and those guys, went through the tribulation. That's another one of those texts that the people who are, who are blind, maybe because they're not going to get raptured and they're going to be left behind, and so in their mind they're focused on the tribulation because they're already, they already know in their spirit from the Spirit of God that they won't be raptured because they're not going to be rapture ready. And so that's why they keep talking about those things. Just, that's a great example. Jesus said, you know, in this life you'll have tribulation. And in the text I quoted, you have houses and lands and vineyards, etc. in this life and in the life to come with tribulation. So people say, oh, well, Jesus said with tribulation. Not the tribulation. There's been a hundred generations that's lived and they weren't in the tribulation. They had tribulation in their life, but not that tribulation. I mean, these are things that a child can understand. By the grace of God, may your ears be open. It's just so elementary and so simple. Anyway, brothers and sisters. <laughs> The good part about this text, for you to see, that's quickened me from the Lord. I mean, the good part for lots of people is they want to hear about being in the rapture. But the good part in my spirit from the Lord, as a servant of the Lord, and I pray that you'll be a servant of the Lord. What is it? Hey, you know what the Lord is just quickening me? What the verse is. If any man serve me. Oh, see, I could preach on this whole ver this verse all day long. If any man serve me, let him follow me. So if you're not 
following Jesus, you're not serving Him. If you're not serving Him, you're not following Him. You can do a whole message on that. Just the first uh, article here, whatever you call it. The first predicate, or whatever that is. It's been a long time since I did English. If any man serve me. Being a Christian is to serve Jesus. There's so many people that say they're Christian, and they just have a mental assent. You know, I call them the greasy gracers. They've got a false grace. Tons of my, the people that watch my videos are in that category. They just heard the gospel and they make a mental agreement. Yep, the gospel is true. Okay, bye. We're in James. It says we're saved. Uh, 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 in Ephesians, it says we're saved. Ephesians 2.10. We're saved to do good works. We've been predestined to do good works if we're born again. James said to be doer of the word, not a hearer only. Show me your faith without works. I will show you my faith by my works. Don't you know, O vain man, faith without works is dead. James chapter 2. Go read the book of James and then reconsider. You know, when I was brought up and, you know, when I was a kid, I went to Baptist church and all that. Then I got called to the Lord and then I started in the Baptist church. And then when I read, the, told, sat down and read the New Testament for the first time and I read James and I said, wait a minute. I don't think that the Baptists have know that this is in the Bible. They I haven't read this book. They must have skipped over James. What do they do with James? I'm sure they find a way to, you know, to, to justify it and mark it out. But the book of James really throws a wrench it really throws a wrench when you get all greasy and hyper graceism, hyperism of grace, whatever you want to call it. Anyway, brothers and sisters, that's a whole nother message. If any man serve me, let him follow me. <laughs> I'm not doing this text justice, brothers and sisters. I'm sorry. I'm way, you know, I'm running late because of the brownout. And where I am, there will my servant be. So that text I'm getting to, where I am, there my servant will be. Like I said, the first part that people love to hear is about being in heaven. But what does it mean? Where I am. There shall my servant be. Here, I want to read another text to you and tell you. I want, to read, I, want, I want to read another text to you here. Let me skip ahead. There's no. Wait a minute. Let me find the text. Uh, all right. Now, let's see. Matthew chapter 25. Okay, verse 31, Matthew, now this is what the Lord quickened in my spirit about that text. Where I am, my servant will be also. Matthew 25, verse 31, When the Son of Man shall come in His glory and all the holy angels with Him, they shall sit upon His throne of glory, and before Him shall be gathered all the nations. These are the people that went through the tribulation. And He shall separate them from one another. This is not the church, but this is the nations. But still, still gives us an example. One another, a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats, and he set his sheep on the right hand and the goats on the left. And then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye blessed of the Father, inherit the kingdom prepared from you from the foundation of the world. That's the tribulation saints. Now listen to this. For I was hungry, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in, I was in prison, and ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him and say, when did we see you hungry and, and feed thee? When, or thirst and give you drink? When saw we thee uh, as a stranger and took thee in, or naked and clothed thee? And when saw we thee sick or in prison and come unto thee? And the King, that's the Jesus Christ, the Son of Man, the Lord Jesus Christ, the King shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as it has been done unto one of these, the least of these, my brethren, you've done it unto me. Then shall say to those who are cursed, you know, I was hungry and you didn't feed me. You didn't give me anything, to, any meat. When I was thirsty, you didn't give me anything to drink. And they said, you know, and all those things again. And they say, when did we not do this to you? And then Jesus said, when you've done it, not done it to the least of these, my brethren, you've done it unto me. That's what the Lord quickened to me about that text. Where he is, where is Jesus, there my servants will be also. So where is Jesus? He's sick and in prison. And naked and without clothes. He's an orphan in the Philippines. Amen, brothers and sisters. So what does that mean? This is the text that the Lord quickened to me. The meaning of that text. Another meaning of that text. Is that wherever is one of the brethren, any Christian or in this context is talking about tribulation saints. But it's also today in the church. Wherever there is a Christian the least of these, my brethren, you've done it unto me. 
So there are Christians who have been falsely put in prison. Some of them actually have backslid in sin and they're in, in prison, or they got saved in prison. There are people who are homeless somewhere in the world who are Christians, people who have nothing, no clothes to wear, who are Christians. There's Filipinos right here, like the Joshua's ministry ties to help, that are Christians. And many of them that are not Christians that become Christians because we help them. That's what the Lord is saying. Wherever He is, there my servants will be. Jesus was born in a manger, brothers and sisters, out and laid in the feeding trough of the cows was the baby Jesus. That's where the Lord is in the highways and the edges. Amongst the poor, even among rich people, all places in the world, there's the Lord. And He says, if you're a follower of me, if you're a servant of me, you will follow me, and wherever I am, you'll be also. So where is the Lord working? Through His church, through His people. So are you there? You know, where is Jesus said in the town you live in? Or even like here in the Philippines through Joshua's ministry. Jesus is there and you should be there with Him. He said, wherever I am, my disciples will be there too. Wherever He is, we're supposed to be there. You know, like that song by the Casting Crowns. If we are the body, why is our feet not going? If we are the body, why our hands aren't giving? And if our hands aren't healing? Hallelujah. If we are the body, hallelujah. If we are the body of Christ, why are we not going and doing and giving? Feeding the sick, you know, feeding the, you know, praying for the sick, feeding the hungry, clothing the naked. That's the message people need to get, but they want to hear about the rapture. They want to hear about when they get to heaven. You know, that's going to, once that happens, that's it, you're there. You know, I've, this is the message of all, you know, I always get to the, you know, you always get down where the, where the axe meets the grindstone, as they say in English, you know, where the rubber meets the road. You know, you're going to be there in eternity sitting there looking like a, some kind of a clown and then no rewards, no nothing. And then people, they're so arrogant. They say, oh, I don't care. Did you, you know that Matthew 25, Jesus tells the parable of the talents in there also? And there's other chapters in the other gospels where the Lord tells the parable of the talent. He says, you know, basically the short version is he gives a guy a ten, uh, five talents. He gives another guy, and it's the talents of gold. Now, you know, in English, a talent is also a perfect word because a talent is, you know, have an ability to speak, an ability to tell people about Jesus, ability to lay hands on people, ability to cook. I have a talent to cook and give food to poor people and tell them about Jesus, whatever. One guy gets five talents. The master gives another guy two talents and gives another guy one talent of gold. Then he goes to a far country. The guy with the five, he hustles up and doubles the money. The guy with the two talents, he hustles up with that money and doubles that. Then the guy with the one, he's afraid that he's going to lose it. His master will be mad, so he hides, the, buries the one talent of gold. When the master comes back, the one with the five, he says, Hey, look, master, look what I did. I, I, I doubled what you gave me. Oh, well, good, my, well done, my good and faithful servant. Enter into your rest of the Lord. The other one with the two that turned it into four, that's awesome. Same thing. Jesus, you know, the Lord says, Enter into your rest, my good and faithful servant. The last one has one. Well, I knew you were you know, uh, hardcore and wouldn't, you know, and give me a hard time if I lost the money. So I didn't do anything with it, but I saved you. Here's your original talent that you gave me. And then Jesus said, you wicked servant. He cast him in, you know, in with the sinners. And he took his talent and gave it to the one who had 10. He said, him who has will have more. And it has nothing, you know, be taken away even what he thinks he's got. And he's cast him out. I mean, what does that mean? Go read that. Matthew chapter 25 in that same chapter I was just reading from. That's what we're talking about. In that same chapter, the, Jesus tells the parable of the ten virgins. He talks about the five wives that have enough oil and the five that don't have enough oil. Then he goes immediately in. You know, in the Bible, in the original text, number one, there was no chapters and there were no verses. So, you know, it's just all read together. So in that same back-to-back, back-to-back, Jesus tells the story of the ten virgins, which the five wise is the rapture church. The five foolish is those who are left behind. Jesus says, I never knew you when they try to get into the wedding. And Jesus says, I don't even know who you are. I never knew you. Slams the door in their face. Then he immediately tells the parable of the ten ta uh, of the parable of the talents. He said, kingdom of heaven is like this. And the kingdom of heaven is like that. And then the kingdom of heaven is like this. So those three parables he tells back to back to back. The ten virgins, five wise and five foolish, the parable of the talents, and then the parable of what I just told you too about the, the sheep and the goats, they call it. Separating the sheep from the goats. So that is at the second coming. 
where he separates, he gathers all nations. That's the valley of Jehoshaphat, the valley of decision. And the Lord will judge them, you know, there in, in Jerusalem. So anyway, brothers and sisters, I pray that this message would strike you in the heart. That where Jesus is, you will be also. All the time, every day. In other words, if you go to a bar, you're taking Jesus with you to a bar. If you go to, as Paul says, when you lie with a prostitute, you know, you're causing the, the, the Lord to do that also. You know, if you become connected, if you commit adultery, you're, you're, the, you are, if you're indwelt with the Holy Spirit, you're leading the Lord into your adultery, into your sin. You know, so what, that's why they, you know, they used to have those uh, wristbands 10 years ago, 15 years ago, the WWJD, what would Jesus do? And people mocked it, made it fun. And that's really a great question. That's a great reminder for people. What would Jesus do? What would Jesus be doing right now? He wouldn't be debating the merits and the doctrine of the Trinity on YouTube and trolling people's videos about secondary non-essential doctrines. Even the rapture is a secondary non-essential doctrine. You do not have to believe in the rapture to be saved. And if you do believe in the rapture, and you and you know, and some people who don't think the rapture is true, that doesn't make those people not Christian. To believe or not to believe in the rapture. It's no connection to our salvation. By grace are you saved through faith, not of your own, but a gift of God, not by works that you see any man should boast. Or a better verse for this would be Romans. That was Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. But in Romans, it says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. That's the main thing. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whomsoever should believe in Him should not perish but have everlasting life, said Jesus Christ. John 3, 16. Except a man be born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. John 3, 3. Romans 9 and 10. If you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord and God has raised us from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Praise God. Praise God we're saved by faith through grace in the finished work of Christ, brothers and sisters. And I pray that if you're saved, Jesus said, you know, if any man will serve me, let him follow me. That's the text, that's the, the text we're working out of here. From that John chapter 12. I think it's verse 25, 26. If any man serve me, let him follow me. What did I could go on and on. But this is going to be a long video. What did Jesus just get through saying in that text that we're working out of, brothers and sisters? He said, except a grain of wheat fall to the ground and die, it abides alone. And if it, if it dies and it bears much fruit, he's talking about himself and then the church. Because in the next verse, he's talking about those who follow him. In the next verse, he says, if any man would lose his life for my sake, you know, he'll, he'll, gain, it, he'll gain eternal life. If you love the, the life in this world, well, you, you know you're dead. If you live in this world, you'll be dead. If you die to this world, I'm saying it in different words, then you'll have eternal life with Him. So die to the things of the flesh, the desires of the flesh. You die to your own will. It's like Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. You know, not my will, but thy will be done. That's what He's saying. Jesus is saying, follow His example. Not that you have to be crucified, literally. Sometimes people have been crucified, literally. Peter was crucified upside down. Paul was beheaded. All the other apostles were killed, but John. John was the only original apostle who was not killed. They boiled him in oil and he lived by a miracle of God. And then, later on, after he lived because God had a purpose for him to write the revelation of John, the revelator, and to write John 1, 2, and 3. That's the only reason why he lived, because God had a plan for him. And God even said, you know, the Lord even said, if I will for him to live until I come back, what is it to thee? He said to Peter. Also on that note, I give a little Bible trivia. You know, his brother was the first apostle to die. It was James, the brother of John. And it's so ironic and funny, too, because the mother, Salome, the mother of James and John, she asked Jesus, hey, let my two sons sit on your right hand and my left. And, you know, Jesus said, it's not for me to give that. And are you willing to drink the cup that I drink from? He asked them. And he said, you will indeed drink of the cup that I drink from. What is that cup? The cup of he was crucified. The cup of martyrdom. The cup of that he would be, uh, you know, suffer. The cup of sorrows that the Lord took. That's why Jesus said, let this cup pass from me. But nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be good. Jesus took that cup and the apostles took that cup. That's a whole other message. See, the Lord's giving me all that. Have you taken, everybody wants to take the cup of communion. 
for blessings and a communion to be one with Christ. Well, what about the communion of suffering? What about the communion of what happened to all the apostles? You know, Paul was, uh, John was born in all, but he lived. And then he was put in a prison camp on the Isle of Patmos where he had the, you know, the revelation. He was released after that, uh, I think it's Domitian, the emperor Caesar Domitian died. Are you, uh, this is a whole other sermon. Brothers and sisters, right there, all these things I'm saying. I mean, they're, all these one-liners are zingers right up there at the top of, of things that we need to get struck in the heart with. You're going to drink the cup that the Lord Jesus drank out of, that the apostles drank out of? You want to partake in the body and blood of Christ? In this life, we will have tribulation. That's a whole other video. I need to do that. Not the tribulation, but tribulation. And many of you have already suffered tribulation. I hear from you guys every day. As a pastor, I hear from people who are going through tribulation every day. And I pray with them and pray for the, you guys who are in those situations. Get words from the Lord, etc. By the grace of God. And that's what the Lord has His servants for, like me. Uh, ministers of the gospel. Preachers. To try to help you along this rough road. This narrow, rugged way. As Jesus said, anyone that will not take up his cross daily... And follow me is not worthy of me. He said daily in one of the Gospels. It's Luke. In Luke, Jesus said, anyone who does not take up his cross daily and follow me is not worthy of me. That's what I'm saying. The greasy gracers want to give a mental assent, a mental agreement to the Gospel and go on their worldly demonic way. The hyper gracers, the greasy gracers, the Judaizers, they don't rely on Christ to help them and the grace of God to carry them in faith in Christ to make a way. They want to do it through the Old Testament, not with a cross, but with the Torah, which is Hebrew for the measuring rules, the law, as we say, people say in English, the law. God bless you all, brothers and sisters. May the peace of the Lord be upon you. I want to pray right now. Hallelujah. I want to pray for you. Let's, let's end with a song. Uh... Let's, uh, I'm just thinking what, uh, let's keep going on. Let's hear this song. I'm going on. Let's worship the Lord. Father, bless your people with health, wealth, wisdom, peace, joy, and love in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going on. Let's sing it. Sing it. I'm going on. This is by the Church of God. Acapella on YouTube. I'm going on. I'm going on, sing it. I'm going on until the final triumph. I'm going on, I'm going on, I'm going on until the final triumph. I'm going on. Are you going on? I'm going on as the Lord gives me the grace. Should foes obstruct my way. Said persecutions, fires be lit, and faith is in the ancient days. But Jesus by my side, his peace within my soul. No matter if the battle's hot, I mean to win the goal. I'm going on, I'm going on, until the final triumph. I'm going on, I'm going on, I'm going on. Until the final trial, I'm going on. I see a shiny crown awaiting over there. I see a mansion all prepared and decked with beauties rare. The shack would intervene, deprive me of my right. They all now go until I reach that city of delight. I'm going on. I'm going on until the final triumph. I'm going on. I'm going on. I'm going on until the final triumph. I'm going on. Forward, let us go, our hearts with love aflame, our snowy banner borne aloft inscribed with Jesus' name. The host of evil flee, and heaven's open gate. Invite me now to hasten where eternal glory waits. 
I'm going on, I'm going on until the final triumph. I'm going on, I'm going on, I'm go. Are you going on? Until the final triumph, I'm going on. Hallelujah. Until the crown is won. I mean to fight the fight of faith till life on earth is done. I'll never more turn back. Defeat I shall not know. For God will give me victory if onward I shall go. I'm going on. I'm going on. Until the final triumph. I'm going on. I'm going. Are you going on? We sang it many times. <laughs> Until the final triumph, I'm going on. Praise God, brothers and sisters. Praise God through whom all blessings flow. Praise God, all ye creatures here below. Praise God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. As I speak it right now in the name of Jesus Christ, I speak right now that the peace of God fill your hearts and minds with the love of Jesus Christ right now. I speak the peace of of the Lord Jesus Christ upon you. I speak His love right now in the name of Jesus. I speak and I command your bodies to come in agreement with the Word of God. It says, by the stripes of Jesus we were healed. I command your body to come in agreement. For he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord saith unto the church. Hallelujah. Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. The Lord promised us. Now believe it. For without faith it's impossible to please God. Hallelujah. And He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. Hallelujah. Praise God, Almighty brothers and sisters. Blessed be the name of the Lord our God, Creator of heaven and earth. And blessed be His Son, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah, the Christ, the only begotten of the Father, King, King of all the earth. Hallelujah. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Hallelujah. He is the light of the world. Hallelujah. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God Almighty. He stepped down into darkness for us. Hallelujah. Let's worship Him. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. Here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. Lord, you're all together worthy, all together lovely, all together wonderful to me. Hallelujah. Lord, we praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. And we lift our voice, let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ears. Yes, Lord. Take joy, my Lord, Lord, in what you hear, let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ears. Hallelujah. We praise you, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord God. We bless your holy name, Lord God. Lord, we offer our lives to you. Everything I've been through. Use it for your glory. Lord, I offer my days to you. Hallelujah. Offer your life to him. Your days to him. Your nights to him. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord, we praise you, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. We come to praise you, Lord. We came to worship you. We came to lift up your mighty name in this place, Lord God. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord God, for thou art worthy. Thou art worthy of all praise and glory. Hallelujah. Mighty is the Lord our God. Hallelujah. God bless, brothers and sisters. May the peace of the living God be upon you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace and give you his rest and give you his salvation. Hallelujah. Received by faith through the blood of Yeshua, Jesus to Christ. Hallelujah. God bless, brothers and sisters. You know, the Spirit of the Lord is with you always, even to the end of the age. For the Lord has given himself for us. Hallelujah. Our living sacrifice you should offer yourselves every day. As Paul said, I die daily. Every day, brothers and sisters, it's a daily walk with Christ. Follow him. 